So dear students, today we'll study about the brown ring test. It is a very important uh, topic for our discussion, my dear students. Can you hear me, all of you? Yes. Can you see it written here on the paint brown ring test? Can you see it is written on your screen brown ring test? Yes. Okay. Now let's have a look to this uh, brown ring test, my dear students. Okay, uh, dear students, to perform the brown ring test, we first need FeSO4 with us. So we use the freshly prepared FeSO4 solution. Now you can see that we are going to add the FeSO solution, FeSO4 solution into the uh, solution of our salt which is given to us. Now we are going to add concentrated sulfuric acid. So we are going to add this concentrated sulfuric acid by touching the wall of the test tube. You can see we need to add it very, very uh, carefully. You can see that we have been adding it by touching the wall of the test tube. So here you can see that there is some reaction that takes place. When this reaction takes place, we get a compound. This is the compound that we get for the brown ring that we are going to study in detail. But you can see that there is a brown ring that is forming between the juncture of these two solutions. And this is how you can easily understand the brown ring that has been formed. Okay. So dear students, have you seen this brown ring test? Students, I'm asking you something. Yes. Have you seen this brown ring test? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. What yes. you can see on your screen now? Paint. 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 Okay. 
So thank you for a, a nice reply. Now let's move forward and understand something more. <clears throat> so let us study about brown ring test and uh, see in detail. Uh, see, brown ring test. Can you tell me what is being required? Requirements. Especially the chemicals. Nitricous. What chemicals do we need? First, we need the given salt. Then we need FeSO4. Then, my dear students, we need uh, given salt, FeSO4. Then we need, uh, you know, concentrated H2SO4. These are the things that are being needed. Now, what do we do? We first mix. First mix solution of the salt. with freshly prepared FeSO4. So my dear students, we work, just mix the solution of salt with freshly prepared FeSO4. What happens? And then we carefully add, carefully add, concentrated sulfuric acid touching the wall of the test tube. This is what it happens. So when we add this at the juncture, if there are two possibilities, if brown ring is formed, we can easily conclude that NO3 minus is present. And if brown ring is not produced, we can say NO3 minus is absent. So this is how my dear student, we study about the brown ring test and we can conclude the things which are being needed. Now, my dear students, when it comes to when it comes to understanding this we need to understand it well so actually what happens so first of all you need to understand that this is the test for the identification brown ring test is the or brown ring test is the test to identify test for identification of NO3 minus or nitrate ions. When it comes to the identification of the nitrate ions, my dear students, what happens here? This NO3 minus first oxidize Fe plus 2 to Fe plus 3. Please remember, and it itself is reduced to NO. This is what it happens. So NO3 minus oxidizes Fe plus 2 to Fe plus 3 here. And it itself is reduced. So you can easily say that this is oxidation. And this is the process of reduction. So NO3 minus, which is having plus 5 oxidation state, is reduced to plus 2 oxidation state and Fe plus 2 which was uh, having plus 2 oxidation state that has been oxidized to plus 3 oxidation state. 
this is what we can easily understand in this process. Now what happens when we have FeSO4, we have prepared, freshly prepared FeSO4 solution. This FeSO4 solution, my dear students, has got Fe plus two. This Fe plus two in the aqueous medium, in the aqueous medium, it hydrolyzes and it is hydrolyzed to a compound known as Fe H2O6. Now please remember this anode which is produced over here is utilized in this process. So here we have got this anode. This anode reacts with the hexa aqua iron 2. This is plus 2. Now here a wonderful reaction takes place which is known as the electron transfer. Electron transfer. So here my dear students the electron transfer takes place. Now how this electron transfer takes place let us understand this. You know this we have got NO. This NO which is nitro, uh, nitrogen 2 oxide turns out to be NO plus 1 and it releases one electron. This electron is transferred and what happens? This Fe plus 2 turns out to be by taking this one electron and it turns out to be Fe plus 1. So please remember my dear students that this is the oxidation reaction. This is the reduction reaction. And overall, if we look into my dear students, we will have the redox reaction and we can write the redox reaction as NO plus Fe plus two that gives NO plus one and Fe plus one. This electron transfer, which you can, which you have seen here, that we have this electron transfer. This electron transfer takes place. This is what it is, the electron transfer. Electron transfer here takes place. So by electron transfer, we get a new compound. This new compound is this way, Fe, H2O5, then we have NO, and that gives us plus two. So we have Fe, H2O5, NO, plus two. Now please remember that we have this Fe is a plus one and NO is also available as plus one. So we have Fe plus one, we have NO plus one and due to that we get this kind of products form. So when it comes to this electron transfer, due to the electron transfer from the hexa aqua iron two, we get the new compound. Now let us try to understand this new compound, my dear students. So if you want to understand this new compound, let us give a name to this new compound now. Let me write this new compound for you, my dear students, that we have this new compound, Fe, H2O5, NO, and then we have here plus two. Here, this nitro, this NO that produces a NO plus one plus one electron, this NO that we have is known as the nitro so. This nitro so is converted into nitrosonium ion. This nitro so is converted into nitrosonium ion. So now we can write the name of this compound as this is the compound of penta aqua this nitrosonium we should write with the uh, penta aqua nitrosonium 
iron one iron sometime what happens the same compound can also be found in this form fe h2o5 no and instead of writing plus 2 we will write so4 so that is what it has got the name penta aqua nitrosonium iron iron 1 sulfide please remember my dear student that here we have this compound where instead of you know nitroso we have nitrosonium i so here the electron transfer take place this is the this is the compound which is responsible for the brown ring this is the compound which is responsible for the brown ring so you should know about the uh, chemistry of this compound so let us try to understand the chemistry of this compound that how can we have this chemistry of this compound or we should know about how this compounds is formed and what are the various things that we should know about this compound let us try to understand the chemistry of this compound so we have seen the name now let us understand how this complex is formed so you can see that in this compound we have central atom iron and iron has got the electronic configuration argon 3d6 4s2 as we have our uh, iron for argon 3d6 4s2 we can write it as fe plus 2 sorry we should write it as fe plus 1 because fe is available as a plus 1 into it so as we have fe plus 1 we will have argon 3d6 and we will have 4s1 so we can show this argon 3d6 4s1 in this manner my dear student that we have this six electron in uh, iron available in this form then we have in forest we have one electron then apart from that we have 4p also available in the same valence shell and then we have even 4d's are also available which are vacant but we have here forest we have here 3d6 now we know that when this compound is formed we have two ligands so let's look at the various ligands that we have ligands available are first ligand is water another ligand is anion so when we look at the first ligand my dear student water which is a weak ligand and anion which is strong ligand now when we have weak ligand this weak ligand does not cause pairing and if you have strong ligand that cause pairing so we have strong ligand we have weak ligand this weak ligand does not cause pairing the strong ligand cause pairing so this nitroso no nitrosonium that we have this no cause pairing of this ion so what we should write here or what we should understand that no ligand being strong cause pairing of forest electron and thus this electron is transferred to this orbital so now when we write the electronic configuration for our compound fe H2O5 NO plus 2 my dear students how shall we write this that we will have
these five 3D orbitals, this orbital also become paired because the electron from forest come to this. We have these three unpaired electrons, and then we have this forest vacant. Then we have this four uh, p vacant. Then we have this four d vacant. So we have this four s, four p, four d, and thus we can have this hybridization this way. S p three d two. So you can see that even two four d are also being involved into it. As this sp three d two hybridization takes place, my dear students, we can have. Now we have this. 3d orbitals then we have five equal sorry six equal sp3 d2 orbitals and then we have this 4d orbitals which do not take part so now you can see that dear student that the electrons which are present in 3 they are arranged and we have three unpaired electrons in this sp3 d2 the electrons are filled so you can see that the electrons from the various ligands come over here so these various ligands give these electrons as you can see no then oh2 then oh2 then oh2 oh2 and oh2 so this is how our fe h2o5 and no Plus two ligand is formed where we have the oxidation state of Fe plus one and NO is also plus one. So this is how the compound is formed. Due to the sp three d two hybridization, the shape is going to be octahedral. Please remember that the shape is going to be octahedral. You can even see that there are three unpaired electrons. Three unpaired. So we have three unpaired electrons also available with our compound, and we have sp three d two hybridization also takes place. Do you understand this, my dear students? If you have any doubt, you can ask me. Yes, sir. No doubt. बच्चों अगर आपको कुछ समझ में नहीं आता है. No doubt. No doubt, sir. No doubt, sir. thank you dear students so now my dear students what happens we get this compound formed now this compound which is formed over here it has got octahedral shape so let me explain the octahedral shape here dear student uh, that first we have now you can see that this fe is the central atom for us then you can have or we can have the various ligands bonded to this fe so we can write them in this manner dear student that we have oh2 oh2 then oh2 then oh2 then oh2 and then we have no over here due to that what happens dear student that there is an octahedral shape possible you can see the octahedral shape it's very easy for you to understand it this is how the octahedral compound is produced now when it comes to the octahedral shape we need to now study about the magnetic properties so let us try to study about the magnetic properties of this compound 
magnetic properties so first of all we should know that this compound is paramagnetic why it is paramagnetic because it has got three unpaired electrons three unpaired electrons same way the next thing what we can study is about the mu b this is what it is known as the uh, magnetic momentum magnetic momentum here we know that magnetic momentum is equal to n into n plus 2 thus here my dear students we have n is equal to 3 because there are three unpaired electrons so we can write square root of 3 into 3 plus 2 that is square root of 3 multiplied by 5 that is square root of 15 so we can calculate the mu b or into square root of 15 bohr magneton or 3.87 that is what we generally get when we uh, find out the uh, square root of 15 we need to remember few more thing here my dear students that here we have sp3 d2 hybridization so it is a an outer complex please remember that it is an outer complex and as we have three unpaired electron the complex is high spin complex so it is a high spin complex it is an outer complex we have the magnetic momentum even calculated for it we have the paramagnetic behavior also we have seen and we have this octahedral complex available for it so now if you have any doubt you can ask me dear students do you understand everything about octa uh, about this complex if you have any question you can ask please no sir no doubt okay then let me ask you some questions now will you please answer the questions about it will you please answer the questions about brown ring test <laughs> 